in need. Amen. That we rejoice again and again to the glory and honor of his name. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Hallelujah. So even as we are here, we are just to, to rejoice for the good work the Lord has done for us. The salvation that he has given unto us. Just acknowledging what he has made us to be. Uh, what he has given unto us. He has made us to be his sons because we believed in him. If there is any qualification any other person wants so that he or she may join the great family, the family of God, it is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So this morning, we want to learn the word of God and we have our very own pastor in the house. She's going to take us through this morning session. So we put our hand, clap our hands, even as she is coming to teach us this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Just turn to your neighbor and tell them, Nelvin has said hi. <laughs> Amen. God is good and... That is his nature, and we rejoice even in his goodness. So uh, we have had a great moment to pray, and we thank the Lord even because of that, that we are privileged to be found in this place and just to take our time and pray to the Lord and just give him all the glory and exalt his name. It is so good. Praise the Lord. Amen. And even before I, we study the word of the Lord together, I want us even to pray. Just pray that even as the word is ministered to you, your heart is ready even to receive in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Father Lord, I give you praise. I thank you for the great moment that you have bestowed unto us the greatest privilege of all to be found fellowshipping together, O oh Lord, that even as the word is ministered to us through your spirit, O oh God, we are edified, we learn, O oh King of glory, and indeed we walk according to the way we are supposed to because your spirit is in us and we are led by the spirit. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Just appreciate the Lord even with a clap. And it is so good. Amen. Amen. Today we want to study about the spirit which is his spirit. The spirit which is of God. And uh, we will start from the book of Ezekiel. So you have your Bible. Ezekiel is in the Old Testament. In the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel chapter 36. Yes, when we read the book of Ezekiel chapter 36, always uh, we speak of the new heart that the Lord has given unto us. But today I want us to acknowledge that indeed, even in him giving us a new heart, he has given unto us a new spirit. Praise the Lord. So Ezekiel is just after lamentation and then you'll get Ezekiel. So when you are there, you just say amen and then we continue even in the reading of the word of God. Are you there? Ezekiel chapter 36. I'll start from verse 25. It says, the Bible says, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I cleanse you? So this cleansing, you see that uh, here it is God speaking. And he says that, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. So his sprinkling of the clean water upon us is that at the end of the sprinkle of the clean water, we be clean. 
So from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. So when we see that we, uh, he cleanses us from all our filthiness and from all the idols, we see that it is not just mere water that, uh, that is out there, but it is uh, the spatial one because uh, this water cleanses us from all filthiness and from all the idols. Verses 26, the word of God says, a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. So that when you read verse 25 and you see the sprinkling of clean water upon us and verse 26 says that a new spirit. So you get to see that this clean water that is to be sprinkled is indeed a new spirit. So he says, and a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh. Verse 27 says, and I will put my spirit. So uh, when uh, verse 26 says that I will give you a new spirit. And verse 27 explains that this new spirit that he will give, because this is a promise even in the book of Ezekiel, this uh, new spirit, verse 27, is explained and said to be that I will put my spirit. So the new spirit that God promised even in the book of Ezekiel that he will put in us is his own spirit. Praise the Lord. And cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. So the spirit, which is his spirit in us, remember we are studying his spirit, the spirit which is a new spirit that is spoken about here, that is a promise that I will give. It is indeed explained that it is the spirit which is the spirit of God. So this is a promise that was made in the book of Ezekiel. And let us see even this promise in in the book of John, how uh, this book of John explains the spirit, which is the new spirit, the spirit of God. We have seen in the book of Ezekiel that I will give you a new spirit. And verse 27 says that it is my spirit. So uh, let's go to the book of John chapter 7. And as always, when we are there, we say amen. The book of John chapter 7, I'll start from verse 38. John chapter 7 verse 38. The word of God says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said. You remember when we were studying about the mystery and Jesus explained even in the book of Luke chapter 24, that all that the scripture testifies, they testifies about me. And verse 38, he says that he that believeth on me as the scripture has said. So he that believeth on Christ Jesus, because it is Christ Jesus who speaks. He that believeth on Christ Jesus, even as the scripture has said. What has the scripture said? We read in the book of uh, Luke chapter 24 that all that the prophet spoke about, all that were written in the psalmist were written concerning Christ Jesus. And it was written... Uh, concerning his suffering. He will come, he will suffer, then he will die, he will be buried, and on the third day he will be raised back to life, even by God himself. So John chapter 7 verse 38 says that, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. How many believers are here? So the word of God that says that he that believeth on me. So you are a believer. You are a believer. You believe even as the scripture has said. What has the scripture said? Scripture says that Christ Jesus will come, will suffer, will die, and will be buried. And on the third day, he will be raised back to life. 
And believers, when we are to believe, we confess the Lordship of Christ Jesus. So when we have confessed and we believe, even as the scripture has said, out of his belly, them that believe, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And listen, Kinley, verse 39, it explains this, uh, the rivers of living water, verse 39 says, but this spake he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. But this spake he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. So the rivers of living water is the spirit which is of God. That whoever believes, everyone that believes has received this spirit. So, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So, when Jesus was glorified, he brought the Holy Ghost even to us. Praise the Lord. So, we have seen that this new spirit is not just our spirit that was there that has graduated to be new. No, but is the spirit which is of God. You remember when we were studying the book of Corinthians, yes, that the natural man, and we will see that even later in our study, that the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit because they are spiritually discerned. Neither can he know them. Amen. So we have received the spirit, which is the spirit of God. And let us see indeed this spirit, if indeed it is the spirit, which is of God. Turn with me in the book of Acts the book of Acts. Acts is just after the book of John. And we read uh, chapter 2. It's starting about his spirit, the spirit that was promised in the book of Ezekiel that he will give unto us. Acts chapter 2 verses 16. Verse 16 says, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. So it's a promise. Verse 17 says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. So you see the new spirit and the spirit which is of the Lord indeed here. Uh, again, Joel, the prophet, testifies and the book of Acts, uh, the writer of the book of Acts quotes that, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. So he poured out of his spirit upon all flesh. He did not look for another spirit to give unto us, but his own spirit, he poured it out upon all flesh uh -huh. and see the results and your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see vision and your old men shall dream dreams so this is actually the evidence of the spirit which is of God the manifestation of the spirit of God that is in us and we want actually to investigate of this spirit more and more and see how it is so evident that it is the same spirit which is of God. So we want to know if this indeed is the spirit which is of God. The spirit that we have received when we believed. Let's go to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 17, the word of the Lord says, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit with him. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit with him. So who is that person that is joined unto the Lord? 
a believer. A believer is that person that is joined unto the Lord. So he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit with him. So the spirit that you have is the same spirit that is of God. And this is the spirit that he gave unto us that is indwelt in us, that cannot leave us, that he promised and he has done even unto us and given it unto us. Again, the same book of Corinthians, just uh, the same book. And then let's go behind and read chapter 2, verses 16. Chapter 2, verses 16. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, let me start from verse 9. First Corinthians chapter. First Corinthians chapter. Okay. Uh, let's read chapter 3 verse 16 first and then we will go to First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. The word of God says... Know ye not that you are the temple of God. Know ye not that you are the temple of God. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. So it is by knowledge that you are to know of the spirit that you have received. And how does knowledge come? Knowledge comes when you sit down and you are taught. So you cannot just know that you have the spirit of God when you are not taught. So the word of God says, know ye not that you are the temple of God. So you are the temple of God. And the evidence of the temple of God is that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. So the spirit of God in you qualifies you to be called the temple which is of God. The temple of God because the spirit of God dwells inside of you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians before we go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17, sorry. Chapter 5 verse 17. This is a verse that we all know. But I'll read. It is good to read. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The word of God says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So a man who is in Christ, he is considered to have all things new, that he does not have anything of the former, but he has the new thing. And this also starts when you have the spirit which is of God. That's what makes the difference between you that is of God and him that has not known God. So them that do not know God, them that have not believed rather, them that have not believed, they do not have the spirit of God. But if a man be in Christ, are you in Christ? So for you to know that indeed you are new, you have to acknowledge that I am in Christ. When you are in Christ, you are in Christ, you have his spirit. Because in Christ, you are joined to the Lord. And we said, uh, we read and we, we considered and we discover that him, the one that is joined to the Lord, is one spirit with him. So for you to know that indeed you have the spirit, the same spirit that is indwelt in you, is the same spirit that is of God. You have to consider and know and acknowledge that indeed I am in Christ. When I believed, I am in Christ. So therefore, if any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. So the new creature is not something that uh, you came with your old things and then uh, you became new. No. The new creation is that the old things have passed away. It is described that all things are passed away. So there are no traces of 
the all things. There are no traces of that. Because uh, even in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 43, the Lord instructs them that do not remember the former things. Why? You are not supposed to remember them because that passed away. Behold, all things are new. Behold, all things have become new. And even this newness, we, we have seen that uh, the Lord promised that he will give us a new heart. He promised that he will give us a new spirit. And this time when Jesus Christ has already been manifested in the flesh and he did all that the prophet spoke about. Indeed, we have received the new heart and we have received the new spirit. Why? Because we are in him and joined in him. And let us see all these things that are new. Verse 18 says, and all things are of God. So these things that are new are of God and not of the former things and not of the things of old, but the things of God. No wonder this is the spirit of God that we have received. So, and all things are of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's read the book of Romans. We'll come back to the book of First Corinthians chapter 2. Let's read the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8. Yes, I'll start from verse 5. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Are we there? We say amen. If we are there. Uh, the word of God says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Are you of the flesh? Are you of the spirit? So, them that are after the spirit, they mind the things of the spirit. The same book of Romans chapter 8, we read uh, verse 9. Verse 9 says, uh -huh, But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Why are you in the spirit? Because you have the spirit of God in you. You are joined even to him. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So being in the spirit is not according to what you do. It's not according to how you do things. But it is because you have believed only. So, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Does the spirit of God dwell in you? So because the spirit of God dwells in you, you are in the spirit. The nature uh, in the spirit is both a nature and an activity. So the things that you do are in the spirit. Who you are is in the spirit because the spirit of God dwells in you. So uh, continues to say now. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his so do you have the spirit of Christ? So you are his. So when you call yourself that I am a son of God, again you are acknowledging that I have the spirit of God at the same time. Amen. So this, these things go hand in hand. Sonship that we have received, the new heart that we have received, everything that we have received from him, you just know that it is because of his spirit that is indwelt in us. Verse 10 says, and if Christ be in you, is Christ in you? So if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. So the fact that Christ dwells in you, it is not uh, about what you do. I'll just repeat. But if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Christ is in you. Your body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So the righteousness that you are, you remember Christ, he was made sin so that we can be called the righteousness of God. So the righteousness that we have 
it is indeed the evidence of the spirit of God because we know that God cannot dwell in a place that it is not holy. Amen. God cannot dwell. So he had to make this beautiful place heart of ours to be holy. So he had to give us his spirit. So we are righteous, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So the spirit of God is living in us. It is living and it is the very, very active in us for the righteousness that we have received. Verses 11 says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Verses 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. Verse 13. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die because you are in the spirit. You are not in the flesh. But if you through the spirit, you through the spirit modify the deeds of the body, you shall live. So how do we make the deeds of the body to be silent that they cannot, the flesh cannot control us? Is by the spirit of God. Is by the spirit of God. Every time you're found uh, they are seated. You just read and acknowledge the spirit of God that is in you. You just acknowledge that he is in you. And even by that indeed, through the spirit that is in you, not your doing, the spirit that is in you, but if through the spirit do modify the deeds of the, of the body, you shall live. Give me NKJV. So it's the spirit of the Lord that is evident in us that causes us even to live a holy life. And it is not by our working, but by him who works in us. Uh, says uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, so it is only by the spirit, the spirit that is in you, that you're able to put to death the deeds of the flesh. So that them that do not have the spirit of God, there is no way that they can be able to put to death the deeds of the flesh. But you have the spirit of God. So if by the spirit of God, uh, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Because you see that the spirit of God is life because of the righteousness that is in us. So when we put to death the deeds of the flesh, indeed the spirit is living and he lives because of the righteousness that it is of God. And it's not because of our working, but because of him who works in us, both to will and to do for his own good pleasure. Verses 14 says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So we are sons. We are led by the Spirit of God. We read the book of Galatians and see this reality that God has wants us to know this morning. Galatians chapter 5, verses 25. Galatians chapter 5, verse 25. The word of God says that if we live in the spirit, are you in the spirit? So if we live in the spirit and yet we live, let us also walk in the spirit. So we are able to walk in the spirit because we live in the spirit. We are able to speak the things of the spirit because we live in the spirit which is of God. So we manifest according to the spirit that is in us. You have the spirit of God. You manifest according to the spirit of God that is in you. So you are exempted to live according to the sight. Because we live by faith and not by sight. So what is uh, the function of this uh, spirit that is in us? We read the book of John. And we see who the spirit is that we have received. It is very important to know what we have. 
John chapter 14. Uh, we start from verse uh, John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 25. The word of God says, These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Verse 26 says, But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So the spirit that is in us teaches us of all things. That's why, uh, that's why we know that there is no one that will teach us to know the Lord, but we shall know him. The book of Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 34 says that no one shall, shall teach his neighbor to know the Lord. For they shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. Why? Because of the spirit which is of God. So verse 26 says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So he teaches us and brings all things to our remembrance. So the speaking that the Holy Ghost speaks and the speaking that we ought to speak even as them that have received the spirit which is of God, we speak in the spirit. We speak the things of the spirit. Because uh, when you want to know the difference between someone that is wise and someone that is not, is by how they speak. When someone speaks, you are able to, to know this is wise and this is not. And we know that we have the spirit of God. So how are we active even in the spirit? By speaking the things that we speak. And how do we speak? Because we are not of them that are of the world. So we speak in the spirit. You remember uh, when God was creating, he said that let there be light. So it's the spirit of God in him, he exercised the spirit even by speaking and say let there be light. And there was light. So let us read the book of uh, Corinthians. Chapter 2, said we will go there. The book of Corinthians, chapter 2, uh, we start from verses 9. Amen. So, uh, the word of God says that, But as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear had, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Verse 10 says, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Which spirit do we have? We have the spirit of God. So God has revealed all these things that I did not see, ear did not heard, nor neither did it enter the heart of man, the things that he prepared for us that love him. So, but God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. So you have the spirit of God, you have the revelation which is of God. The things that men that do not have the spirit of God cannot know, you are able to know. For the spirit searches all things here, yeah, the deep things of God. So you are very deep because of the spirit of God in you. So just exercise yourself to know who the spirit is and speaking even in the things of the spirit. Verse 11 says, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, so this spirit is not of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So this spirit of God causes us to know the things that God has given unto us freely. Verses 13, where we are dwelling on, it says that which things also we speak. So the things that we are given freely by the spirit of God, the things that we have received, these are the things that we speak. We speak in the spirit that we have received. So with things also we speak, 
not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. Why? Because this spirit is not of the world, is the spirit of God. But we speak, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. So we have seen that the Holy Spirit, he will send a comforter and he will teach us. And he will remind us even of the things that he has taught us. So, but with the Holy Ghost teaches. So in our speaking, in our speaking, we speak of the things that the Holy Ghost has taught us. He has taught us that we are loved. He has taught us that he is our comforter. He is the spirit of truth. So in our speaking, we are speaking the truth. And what is the truth here? It is the word of God. So that when the world out there is speaking something else, they are complaining even about the seasons and everything that is going around, we are not of them. Why? Because the spirit that we have received is not of the world and the wisdom that we have is not the wisdom that man gives, but is the wisdom that holy ghost teaches comparing spiritual things to spiritual. Praise the Lord. So it is good to know that we have the spirit which is of God and to exercise ourselves in the knowledge of that. So uh, this moment I want us even to rise up on our feet and just acknowledge in the spirit because the spirit of God is indeed evident in us. And this is the spirit which is of God, his own spirit. Him that is joined of the Lord, he is one spirit with him. So we are one spirit with him. So in your speaking, acknowledge that indeed I have the spirit of God and I am able to compare spiritual things with spiritual. I am able to know that indeed I am blessed beyond a curse. I am able to know that I am blessed. I am able to know that I am favored. I am able to know that God is good. When God is spoken to be good, I know that he is good. Why? Because the spirit of God has taught me. It's not the wisdom that is of the world. It's not the wisdom that is of God because the spirit that we have received is not of the world saying the spirit that we have received is his own spirit if any man be in Christ we are joined we are joined together with him so we are one one spirit one spirit one spirit with him and yet he is the spirit of truth he is the spirit of truth so in your speaking in your speaking you acknowledge that Lord I am one spirit with you so the things that I speak in the spirit, I exercise myself in them because of the special spirit that I have received, the new spirit, the spirit which is of you, oh God, and just exalt him even in your speaking, and just exalt him even in your speaking, and just proclaim and exalt his name, for he has.